yards per game so as they're doing that anthem on the field we'll take a quick break and we will have kickoff and more coming up on norcal sports tv Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five-day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for 4th through 12th grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Football on... Or kick up. Welcome back as we're almost set and ready for kickoff. As we said a little bit in our open, uh, 
two good or one good, really good offense, and then one that's struggling a little bit, but both quarterbacks very good, one and two in the conference in the yards, as we'll see the great Bulldogs quarterback in this game, and that's Anthony Grigsby, and he has been phenomenal, the freshman out of Oaks High School in Stockton. He's gone for 1,936 1, yards so far, 18 touchdowns to just six interceptions, and that is number one in the conference in uh, passing yards. And then on the other side, Chabot, I mean, it's a, it's been a struggle so far on offense, but Colby Furia has played pretty good so far this season, just has to limit the turnovers of, of 1,535 yards, 11 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. And passing yards, that's good for number two in the conference. So the Bulldogs won the toss. They defer to the second half. So the Gladiators will bring their offense out first against this really good, stout San Mateo defense. So Jada to kick things off for the Bulldogs. And Higgins is back, and a Shekelfield, Shekel Ford, excuse me, is back for the Gladiators. And number five, San Mateo at Chabot. We're underway from Chabot as it's taken up the right side and stumbling down, swarmed by a group of tacklers at about the 24-yard line. That is Shekelfield, and that's exactly where the Gladiators will start their first drive. It looked like maybe there was a late flag come in there. <laughs> so we'll have to see who this is on. So it looks like it will be on San Mateo the way that they're talking to Coach Fenene down here at the bottom of the screen. And it's offside on the kickoff, so I think they'll... Looks like they're going to add add five yards to the end of the run. So it looks like that's where the Gladiators will start their drive, and we'll see Colby Furia. And this offense. So it'll start at the 28-yard line. First and 10 for the Gladiators in the backfield. That is the stout running back, Josiah Cote. He's been very good so far this season. He's going to drop back. Quick throw over the middle. That's going to be caught, and that will be a Gladiator first down on play one. It's a gain of 12, and that is a Malachi Matthews. And watching this Gladiator offense throughout the season, it's a full-on air raid offense for sure. Sometimes they abandon the run a little quickly. They've had trouble running it, and the quick pass game is something to look out for as they've done very well with yards after catch as well. Furia gets a delayed snap. Now he's going to look. He's going to try and just dump it off to the running back, Cote, but that was at the shoot tops and incomplete. Putting the pressure on was Nate Carr. as it'll be second and 10. Gladiators offense, you'll see a lot of this spread formation. They have the wide splits on the offensive line. That's also one of the reasons why they have trouble running the football. It's really a struggle as two pass plays so far. And here's going to be a third. It's going to be a quick screen, and it is blown up in the backfield. That is a hit in the backfield, and it's nicely done by Lole. It's going to be a loss of five. So now it'll be third and 16, or third and 15 make that. 
as man in motion. There's a snap. Pressure comes. He's just going to flip it down the field, and it's no good. It's incomplete. As that was a straight drop back and just decide who I'm throwing the ball to right off the snap. Pressure came. They sent five. You'll see a little bit of that from San Mateo. They don't bring a lot of blitzes, but they will bring at least four or five on every play. Sometimes they'll drop back. They'll have three rush and eight drop into coverage. So we'll see the first punt. Not, not really a three and out. No runs on that drive for Chabot. After the first play, as it is fair caught, and that is the great, really good wide receiver, Jeremiah Patterson, who makes the fair catch. And we'll see this high-flying San Mateo offense for the first time in this ball game. Their drive will start at their own 30-yard line. That's a beautiful Beautiful day here, 64 degrees. There's a little bit of wind. It would be going from the bottom to the top of your screen, but nothing crazy. As this San Mateo offense looks very good, has Grigsby. He'll take the snap. It'll be a run right up the middle, and maybe out the left tackle, and he is hit and dropped, and did the ball come out, and they're going to rule he was down by contact, but there is a gladiator down on the field. That's number three, Eric Johnson, and that would be a huge loss as Johnson leads the defense in the interceptions with three and total tackles. So it looks like he was definitely down, and down on the play is Johnson. So with the injured player on the field, we'll take a break here on NorCal Sports TV. Out of the timeout, the injury timeout, as Johnson did walk off the field, but he was holding that left arm in a still position, so hopefully everything's okay there. As it'll be second and six, there's a snap. It's going to be a throw to the bottom of the screen. It's going to be caught, but wrapped up short of the first down marker, so it will be a third down. It was Lowville with the catch. As a... As you'll see, San Mateo, they like to not go full speed. They'll do a little, they'll huddle up and they'll take their time and they'll methodically get the ball down the field. So big play here for the Chabot defense. Third and one. Grigsby gets a snap. It's just a handoff right up the middle, picking out and bouncing it out and getting tackled short of the line to gain. Just a monster, monster play from the Gladiator defense. As that's Elliot Lachenmeyer making the huge tackle for no gain on third down. It was the running back, White, who got the handoff up the middle. He tried to pick his way through. There was nothing there and tried to bounce it. But a great play, and Chabot forces a three and out. So there's a punt, and it's a good one. It's a really good one. It's fair caught at about the 18-yard line there from Franklin. And the Chabot Gladiator offense will come on for their second drive. 
So we'll see this offense. It's led by Faria, of course, a quarterback, and rushing number five, Cote. You'll see him in the backfield. He leads the team with 272 yards on the ground, but just one touchdown. And then you'll have to circle on your monitor or watch out for that number 13, Stewart. He's had a great season so far, 351 yards with four touchdowns. There's a snap. It's a delayed handoff, and it is just blown up in the backfield. Cote had nowhere to go, and it's a loss of three. It's going to be hard to run against this San Mateo front, but we'll see if the Gladiators try to stick with it. So now it's a loss of two, so it'll be second and 12. Cote in motion. Faria gets a snap. He's looking. He's going to have to be rolled out. He spins out of the pocket. Nicely done. He creates time for himself. He's looking downfield. Still nothing open. And he's just going to have to dump it out of bounds. It'll be third and 10, or third and 12. Really nobody open on that play. It was just great coverage from the back end. And here on these third and longs, we're going to half to look at number 10, Durham, on the defensive side, leading the conference with five sacks for San Mateo. Faria gets a snap. They send five. It's a quick pass. There's Stewart. He's right there. He breaks one tackle. He's winding the feet, and he's not going to get there. It's going to be fourth and one, maybe a little bit shorter. So now you'll see here. What's going to be the play call? You have number five at home. You'll see if you can trust your defense. That's what they'll do. The punt unit will come on. It's Ian Hotchetter will come on to kick this thing away. Good effort there by Kerr Stewart. So it's Hotchetter. That's a really good kick. It's just a line drive, and that's loose. It hits the foot of the return man. The ball's still bouncing on the ground, and there's somehow, some way, the Bulldogs maintain possession of that ball. It was just a knuckler. They usually have Patterson back there, but on this return, they had Freeman, and it just bounces right off his foot, and I don't know how the Gladiators didn't pick that ball up. We were looking for our first turnover of the ball game. So let's see if the San Mateo offense can put a drive together as the ball will start at their own 35. So just about the same field position as last time, as their last drive. They went three and out with two runs and a pass. There's going to be a snap. Grigsby's going to look. He's going to throw. It's just a little quick curl route, and that's caught. And breaking tackles coming towards the middle of the field and being slung down for a gain of nine. So good catch and yards after that for Patterson. You'll hear a lot of Jeremiah Patterson as he is third in the conference in receiving. He's num he's the number one receiver on this team with 482 yards, but he's got six touchdowns through the first seven games. So after the gain of nine, it's second and one. Grigsby talking at the line of scrimmage, making another check. Nine to go on the play clock, plenty of time. There's a snap. It's a high one, and there's a give. It's going to be bounced to the outside and picking up the first down easily. There was number five, Nate Sanchez. And we'll talk about Nate Sanchez as he's had a wonderful season as well. He's the leading rusher on this team. 301 yards total on the season, of course, before that run. And he's got two touchdowns as well. So a lot of this team's touchdowns have come through the air as Grigsby's got 18. As they pick up five, maybe six, and it's a first down. So San Mateo, good pass rush mix so far in this game. There's the snap. It's going to be a gift to Sanchez. He's going to put the shoulder down and stumble forward for maybe a gain of two. Okay. 
Chabot in the alternate yellow tops and yellow pants. As another tight formation from the Bulldogs. Pistol. Man in motion, that's Patterson. There's a snap. It's just going to be another straight give. And picking his way through is Sanchez, and he'll pick up the first down. So Sanchez picks up the first down. It was Willie Chase on the tackle. And this is how the Bulldogs will like to move their offense. They'll, they'll like to run the ball here, and that will set up that one deep shot off of the play action. They did that really good last week. They also had the opening kickoff back for a touchdown last week. That also helps the offense. There's the snap. There's a little play action. And here comes that deep shot winding up, throwing over the middle, and it hits the back of the man in coverage. So that's Brooks Daniels, the linebacker, sinking back into coverage as Grigsby did have Patterson over the middle, but it hits him just square in the back. Right in between the two and the three, just on the backside. So that'll bring up second and ten. As we thought that maybe they'd like to run that play action game. We'll see if they go back to the run here. As it looks like there's White. It's White in the backfield. He gets the carry. He stumbles forward. It's a gain of three, maybe four. So it brings up another third and long. So it'll bring up another third and long now. The kicker for San Mateo was good from 52 in warm-ups, so this is just about on the edge of field goal range. There's the snap. Graves, he's going to look. And now pressure comes. He's going to throw over the middle, and that's caught. It'll be a first down, breaking a tackle, and another coming across the 25-yard line and thrown down close to the 20. It's a first down. And that's Patterson again. As excuse me, that was Lowville at the top of the screen. Just run the quick little slant game and the yards after catch. So a monster gain. And it's first and 10 from the 21 for the Bulldogs. Play action. It's going to be thrown into the flat. It's going to be caught and trying to run forward but stood up right there. It was Pitts making the catch. So a good gain on first down, staying ahead of the chains. It's a gain of six. So it'll be bring up a second and four. So it's Ben Char on the tackle. And he's in for the injured Johnson. Bulldogs in the pistol formation. Grigsby giving some instruction. There's the snap. He's going to look. He's going to throw again into the flat. That's caught by Patterson. He's going to try and break more tackles. He's going to run to the middle of the field. He'll pick up the first down. And it'll be first and goal from the seven. This is just really good offense by the Bulldogs. Just get the ball into your playmaker's hands. Just get it to Patterson, and he will do the rest. These five-yard passes are going for in between 12 and 15 yards almost every play. So first and goal for San Mateo. Sanchez in the backfield. They're going to give it to him. He'll run up the middle, he'll pick his way through, and he will be into the end zone for a Bulldog touchdown. Nate Sanchez is third of the season, and it'll put the Bulldogs ahead 6 nothing.
and the extra point is up, and it is good. So a really good drive starting all the way back at their own 35 goes the College of San Mateo. They march down the field, and the number five team in the state will take a 7 nothing lead. We'll have more Gladiator football when we come back on NorCal Sports TV. As after the touchdown for the Bulldogs, we'll see if the Gladiator offense can have a response here with 4.44 to go first quarter. Each team's basically traded off three and outs with Chabot getting the ball first. They got it back, then went with another three and out, and then that great drive from the Bulldogs. So there's the kick. It is a really good one, and it's going to be taking a knee at... The one-yard line. So they they took a knee at the one-yard line, and it'll be gladiator ball at the one. The rule is you got to take a fair catch at the one-yard line, and he thinks that you can just take the knee. So just a tough break. For the gladiators, as back there, that was Chris Shackleford. So Shackleford takes a knee at the one-yard line. And the self-inflicted wounds from the Gladiators have haunted them all year long. And this is a big one. Especially a team that has trouble running the football. You'd like to be able to depend on the run here to just get out of the shadow of your own end zone. But we'll see. Here comes a blitz. And it's going to be swallowed up in the backfield for a safety. Or did the ball come out? And it did, and it's picked up by an offensive lineman and brought out to the five. So we'll check here on the replay. It looked like he was on top of a couple defenders. And that ball was out as he was laying on two defenders. It was picked up by the offensive guard. That's Wagey Depot who picked that ball up. So it's a rush of four yards. So getting, that's one way if you can't run the ball, just give it to an offensive lineman. There's a snap, play action, Furia. He's going to step up in the pocket, and he's going to slide down. It's going to be no gain on the play, maybe even a loss of one. So it'll bring up third down. Just a wacky series all the way around so far. So we'll see if the Gladiators can pick up a first down here. San Mateo showing blitz off the left side. Here they come. There's the snap. It's a rollout. He's going to throw it deep down the field. It's behind a receiver and incomplete as it looked like the official threw his hat on the play so the receiver would have stepped out of bounds anyway. So yet another three and out for the Gladiators, and this one's tough as punting from the back of his end zone is Ian Hotchetter. He's going to have the heels on that back end line. So making adjustments at the line are the personal protectors. As there's a snap, it's a low one. It's scooped up, and it's blocked in the end zone and recovered for a touchdown. So it was recovered in the back of the end zone. I think it was Tae Malai who got the recovery in the end zone. Let's see, 
So we're getting con confirmation it was Darian White on the recovery. Well, he just caught the little tipped punt. So that's a punt recovered touchdown for zero yards, and the extra point is up and good. So Chabot shoots themselves in the foot twice on that drive alone, and the Bulldogs take full advantage. It is 14 to nothing with 3.24 to go. We'll have more right after this. Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five-day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for 4th through 12th grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Here we are back after that punt block for a touchdown. Just a wacky series all the way around. For the Gladiators, let's see if they can get it right this time with the kickoff. As it was last time, Shackleford took a knee at the one-yard line. If you have the fair catch signal, that brings it out to the 25. I'm not sure if he maybe got confused or not. They should let this thing go all the way into the end zone, which they do. It'll take that hop, and it will go into the end zone for a touchback. So this ball will be brought out to the 25. As here's a replay of that punt block, and it was doesn't help that it was rolled back. And the tipped punt was caught into the end zone. So here we go, first and ten. Gladiators have to put some type of drive together. As injury update. On uh, number three, Eric Johnson, he will not return in this game. So the best DB for the Gladiators is out after just one play. Furrier gets the snap. Four coming. He's going to get hit in the pocket. But it's a great pass and a great catch. As coming across is Stewart. He breaks free. He's across to the 45-yard line. And a Gladiator first down. So good catch, good throw. It's a gain of 21. Just got to try to get the playmakers the ball in their hands. It's just a nice little crossing route that goes for 21, and the Gladiators pick up their second first down of the ball game. Fourier gets the snap. It's going to be an inside handoff, and wrapped up is Cote, and he's hitting the backfield. Maybe they'll give him forward progress, a gain of one, as there is a flag on the field. It's in the area of holding at the line of scrimmage. So we'll hear from our official. And it is, it's a face mask. So Chabot will pick up 15 more after just the gain of one. So for the first time in this game, they go across that. 50-yard stripe, and into Bulldog territory. So a ball is pulled forward to the 38-yard line. Furia in the gun. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Five to go on the play clock. Now with two, Furia gets a snap. Four coming. It's going to be a screen. Cote makes the catch, but it is just blown up by that Bulldog defense. The first one there was Lule. And then he was swarmed by other defensive linemen. Great read by the defensive back there and a great tackle just going head on. So no gain on the play. Ten seconds to go on the play clock. Here's Furrier. He gets a snap. Here comes four. Here comes a fifth. He's going to have to roll out to the right. He's looking downfield. There's room in front. Still looking, and now he's just going to have to dump it out of bounds. 
So if the Bulldogs are going to consistently get there with four or five, they can drop more men back into coverage, and it's making it super hard on these Gladiator wide receivers. To find an opening. So it'll bring up a third and ten. Absolutely four down territory for the Gladiators. So you'll want to pick up like a minimal gain here of at least five. Make it fourth and a little bit more manageable. There's the snap. Four come. Furry. He's going to throw over the middle. That's going to be caught. But a great tackle right after it was Franklin who made the catch. As there's it is, it's one of those little crossers again. It's just a gain of two as they tried to just get it to him. But a really good tackle there from Smith. So the Gladiator offense staying on the field as we're under a minute to go first quarter. Furia, let's see how many Bulldogs come. They're showing five. Press coverage across the board. It's going to be six. Furry is going to get the snap. He's going to throw a jump ball, and it is incomplete. Pass was intended for Higgins. And just nothing doing on that drive. As it was Lole in coverage. And it'll be a turnover on downs. So a good drive from Chabot ends with zero points. They move the ball down the field for the first time on the day. Just have nothing to show for it. So there's the snap. It's play action. He's looking. He's got a man behind the defense, and it is caught. 15, 10, 5, touchdown Bulldogs. You get the turnover, you take the shot, and it's executed. Anthony Freeman just with the seam route behind the defense. And College of San Mateo looking to blow this open in the first quarter. So on to attempt the extra point. His Ojeda, his kick is up and good. He's 40 for 41 on the season. He'll add to that number, and with 30 or 26 seconds to go in the first quarter, it is a 21 to nothing Bulldog lead. That's just that's that's what good teams will do right there. Just you get that one turnover, you get that mistake, and then you just take full advantage of it. And it really, it was just a two-man route. It was really just a two-man route out of the play action. They've been running the ball so effectively. As you'll see, yeah, just a quick two-man route. They had Patterson coming down across the field. Just an excellent play call as Freeman was free running right down the seam. And he got behind those deep safeties. So just the momentum has completely shifted after that punt for a touchdown. It's a low-lining kick. It's going to have to be returned, and it is, as it's going to be taken up, breaking one tackle, and then being thrown down was Franklin. He got across the 25 to the 26. As he was brought down by Stafford. And so the Gladiators are right back out there on offense. A pretty good drive the last time they were out, and then it just stalled once they got across the 40-yard line. Let's see if they keep with the quick pass game and just try and pick up four yards of play. Cote in motion. Faria gets a snap. Pressure coming. It's a stunt up the front. He's going to roll out. He's going to throw, and the pass is incomplete. It was intended for Matthews, 
And it goes off his hands. Furia throwing back across his body. So Furia looking back to the sideline, getting a check. Getting the hand signals in. Ten seconds to go on the play clock. Got plenty of time here for you. He gets the snap. He's going to look. Four men coming. He's going to throw across the middle. That's going to be caught. Stumbling over. Breaking a tackle. Spinning out of one as well. As that's caught, he went right back to Matthews after the drop. He picked up the first down. So he does pick up the first down. It's a gain of ten. And that will end the first quarter. It's been an eventful one, that's for sure. Number five, College of San Mateo, lead the Gladiators of Chabot. 21 to nothing after one. We'll have the second quarter of action coming up here on NorCal Sports TV. Welcome back to the action as we're about ready to start this second quarter. 21 to nothing, San Mateo leads it. Gladiators trying to put a, a good drive together. They had a pretty good one last drive. There's a snap blitz coming right up the middle, and Furia swung down in the backfield and dropped. Ron Pulviati was the one who came from the linebacker spot just right up the middle and through. So not the play you wanted on first down right after you get that big 10-yard catch. So it's a loss of six on the play. So nine seconds to go on the play clock. Gladiators trying to at least get some of that yardage back here. There's a snap. Furry is going to look. Four men come. He's going to have to step up in the pocket. He's going to roll out. He's going to look downfield, and now he's just going to have to throw it out of bounds again as there was nobody open down the field, and it'll be third and long. So the sustained drive from the Gladiators so far was their last offensive drive. And that just went one big pass play and then the penalty, and then from there out they gained two more yards. So third and long. Bulldogs showing blitz. They're going to send five. Here's the snap. Here comes the six. Furry is going to look. He's going to be out of the pocket, and he's just going to have to heave this one into the bench area again. And back-to-back -back plays were just nothing doing for Furia and the Gladiator offense, and they will be forced to punt again. Their last punt was blocked and returned for a touchdown. As Hot Cheddar is back again. Granted, the last time, or his last punt that did get blocked, with the snap was rolled back to him. So not much he could do there. As there's another bad snap, Hotchetter has it. He's just going to have to try and kick it, which he does. And then it's, that should be downed. That should be downed by number 45 there, since he did kick that. That should go back towards the 20-yard line, because that would be a downed punt. 
Just a weird, weird game so far in this one. So that that would be a that would be a downed punt right there. So it was caught it was caught at the 16 yard line. So that's where the punt should be downed. But they're gonna give that extra yardage of the run. I don't think the referees have ever seen that before. So it was a negative yard punt play. And the self-inflicted wounds just keep piling on. It's a snowball effect. There's a snap. It's just going to be a jet sweep pop pass out to the outside. Following the blockers, it's going to be a gain of eight, maybe nine on the play. That was to Louisville again. So Kun got the rush on the pop pass. It was a gain of nine. There's a snap. Patterson this time. There's going to be a run right up the middle, but then bouncing to the outside. He followed Patterson, still fighting his way. Somehow he stayed in bounds, getting all the way down to the five-yard line. Tickle Suva was the one who getting his first carry of the game. So I don't know how he stayed in bounds on that first initial cut. So he got to the seven-yard line. So a good pickup, and it's first and goal again. First and goal from the seven. Tekosuba again in the backfield. Patterson. It's going to be a rollout. He's got Patterson in the flat. It's going to be caught, and he's going to die for the pylon, and he is down at the one. Trying to get Patterson another touchdown on the season. It's a good play call to really put that edge man in a bind. So the referee had a great look at it to see if anything stepped out of bounds, which he said that it did. So Grigsby, they're in that tush-push formation. Try to get somebody to jump. There's a snap. It's just going to be a handoff right to the back and an untouched walk-in touchdown for the Bulldogs, and they add to their lead. Julius Tikosuva will get the touchdown. He walks in untouched. And the Bulldogs flexing their muscles with domination. There's a good snap, good hold. The kick is good. 11.54 to go, first half. College of San Mateo showing why they are the number five team in the state. Gladiators are about ready to get their football back. This will be drive number six of the first half. Just four drives for College of San Mateo. They've scored on three of them, plus a punt block for a touchdown. So drive number six. Ojeda's done a great job kicking off putting these return men in a bind as there's another one and this one's fumbled into the end zone he's got to take that out as it was touched 
Breaking tackles and getting out to the outside. Gets a block and look out. He's got blockers. Cutting back to the inside across the 50-yard line. What a return there from Carlos Franklin. So he bobbles it in the field of play. He thought about taking a knee in the end zone. That would have been a safety. And somehow a convoy happened in front of him. And if it wasn't for that cutback run if they could have gotten the block. That would have been a massive play, and it is. So a return of 50 yards on the play puts the ball at the 49-yard line of the Bulldogs. Maybe that's the spark the Gladiators needed. So Stewart in motion. There's a snap. Furry is going to look. He's got him over the middle. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to look downfield. Now he's going to run for it, and he's going to slide down at the 40-yard line. They're going to say he slid down at the 41, so it's a gain of eight yards on the play and a good gain on first down. It was man coverage across the board just with the high safeties. So a gain of eight. And a good positive play for the first time on the drive. As Faria gets a snap again, he's going to look. He's going to look. Now he's going to be wrapped up and sacked in the backfield. So a great job by Valentino Foni on the sack. So now it should be third and eight. Third and seven officially. So that's the Bulldogs' second sack. Just when you think that the Gladiators were getting ahead of the chains. They take one step back. There's the snap. Furry is going to look. Pressure comes. He's going to throw over the middle, and it's off the hands of the defensive back and falls incomplete. Smith had it hit him right in the hands. Not quite sure who the pass was even intended for by Furry. As it looks like maybe he was just trying to get it to Maurice Smith Jr., but Jair Smith had it fall off the hands, almost a turnover. And I'm very surprised with this call to try and punt with the struggles that you've had all day so far. So Hotchetter, good snap, and there's a good punt, and finally it's away. Patterson, there's no fair catch in sight. He's going to take it. He's going to break one tackle. He's going to try and push it up the field, and now he'll be thrown down. So a pretty good return from the star receiver. So the Gladiator defense will come right back out on the field after the three and out. So after the big return, they can do nothing with it. So here's the Bulldog offense. Grigsby gets the snap. Fake reverse. It's going to be a run right up the middle. And uh, ball's loose. It came out. It's still loose on the field. There's plenty of gold jerseys around it, and the Gladiators have it. So one play, and they'll get the ball right back to basically where their drive started. As it was a monster play, it was number 23, Brooks Daniels, who ripped that ball out. So Daniels gets the forced turnover. So on the carry was Matthew White, and he had it ripped out from Daniels. 
So another drive starting in the plus side of the field for the Gladiators. As the offense goes right back to work, Furia, he's going to snap and give it right up the middle. It's the best run play of the day for the Gladiators as the Bulldogs try to rip that ball out and stumbling forward again in nine. As they unravel the pile. So a good rush there by Cote. Let's see if maybe they try to stick to that run a little bit more. As we said in our open, they get away from it and abandon it rather quickly. There's a snap. It's a rollout play. Furia trying to get loose. He has a man open in the middle of the field, but he's going to throw this one away. And into the kicking net on the sideline, so that'll bring up third and one, maybe even less than one. Third and one now from the 46-yard line. There's a snap. Furia gets it. He's going to swing pass, and it's incomplete. Cote was hit right away anyways, so it's actually better that that pass was incomplete. And you would think if you're going to call that little swing pass, you might as well just have your opportunity to jam it right up the middle with a run. So after the incompletion, it's fourth and one, and the Gladiators are going to go for it. So fourth and one. Bulldogs crowding the line of scrimmage. We'll see if it's a run or a pass. It's definitely a pass. Ferry gets a snap. Pressure comes. He's going to throw over the middle. It's high and incomplete. And there's no laundry on the field, and it's a turnover on downs. A little bit surprising that you had third and one and didn't see one, or sorry, second and one on, and you didn't see one single rush play. Three straight passes with one yard to go, and it's a turnover on downs. After the last turnover on downs, it was a one deep shot out of this same formation. There's a snap this time. They'll run it. It's up the middle, stumbling down. It's a gain of three. So it was white on the rush. So just a gain of three to get the ball out to the 40-yard line. Grigsby gets a snap. He's going to look. Couple men, and there's pressure coming. He's going to step up in the pocket. Nicely done. He's going to gain a couple yards as much as he can, and he'll be stopped after a gain of two. So the Gladiators sent a little bit of pressure. They sent five there, and it was picked up nicely by the Bulldogs, but Grigsby was forced to be flushed. Stepped up nicely. Nothing open. Took a couple yards. It'll be third and five. We'll see what the Bulldogs try and do here if they try to run this ball, which it's a play-action pass. Pressure came, but it's picked up. He's going to throw. He's got a man wide open, and it's caught. Gets the block and stumbled down at the 20-yard line. And the Bulldogs offense will keep moving on. Terrence Louisville again with another great catch and run after it. The Gladiators sent the blitz and it was just that over route that's behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. And it was a great pass there from Grigsby and a huge game. Man in motion. There's a snap. It's going to be a give. White is going to be hit in the backfield, and he's going to be thrown down. So 
So White is thrown down for a loss. That's from Alejandro Tovar in the backfield, the great linebacker. Loss of four on the play. Gladiators trying to get a stop. They've had a three and out and a fumble recovery. That's all they've had so far defensively that hasn't ended up in their end zone. There's a snap. It's another play action pass. He's going to look. He's going to step up. It's going to be a corner out. What a throw. It's caught inside the five and down to the one. And it looks like there's a flag in the backfield as well. It was caught by Patterson. I think this is probably rough in the passer as it is. Great job there by Grigsby to step up in the pocket and make the throw. It's rough in the passer for sure unless they're going to maybe talk something a little bit more serious than that. As it is rough in the passer on the defense, so they'll probably so they'll add one yard after the half the distance of the goal penalty. Just a really good throw there by Grigsby. Steps up in the pocket. A nice layered pass to Patterson. And the Bulldogs just cannot miss offensively. So first and goal from the one. We'll see if they go back to that heavy set formation. They don't. They're in the pistol. Grigsby gets it. He's going to try and throw a quick slant, and it's dropped. It's incomplete. So they tried to go with just a one-man quick RPO action type pass, and it was incomplete, beautifully broken up on the play. As now here's that jumbo formation again. They scored on it earlier in the game, second and goal from the one. There's the snap. It's the handoff right up the middle, and he's stuffed in the backfield, fighting for it, trying to get to the goal line. He can't, and now it'll bring up third and goal. So it's Atalele Tangi is the one who got the carry. It was his first of the game. He's still in there. So Tangi in the backfield. 5'10", 2'10". Tangi, it's going to be a play-action rollout. Grigsby's going to look. He's got a man, and it is a diving catch in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. So the play-action works to perfection. As that was caught on the play. So nothing better than bring in defensive players. It was a linebacker making the play. Bring in, bring in a linebacker as a lead blocker and have him roll out and make the diving play. That was the reaction from the sideline. So 4.56 to go in the first half. It is a 35 nothing Bulldog lead. Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five-day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for 4th through 12th grade boys and girls. Go to norcalsportstv.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Football. On After that touchdown by the Bulldogs, it was actually, we finally got the name as they had to switch jerseys with the double number since it was a defensive player. It was number 32, Arona Ataau, making the touchdown grab as he was a linebacker. 
So here's the kickoff after the touchdown. Gladiators, they got a monster return last time. We'll see what happens this time as Franklin trying to bounce to the outside. He's bouncing off two tackles, and then he's just thrown down. Forward progress will give him to the 17. There's a little bit of a scrap down here at the five-yard line. Flags come flying. Pushing and shoving. There's another flag that comes out. So Stotler, who was in there for the Gladiators. A little bit of frustration being shown. So we'll see right there at the 10-yard line. There's the block, the throwdown, and the takedown. So referees still talking about this. You would think that it would probably be offsetting penalties, but there was a couple of flags on the play. There's actually a flag up by where the tackle was made at the 17-yard line as well. So there's two flags with a scrap. So this is after the play, number 42. So those penalties offset, and then there's another penalty after the play, but that one is on the Bulldogs, so then that will move the ball 15 yards from the 17. So three total personal fouls. So what they're gonna what they're gonna get on the penalties here are it'll be the two in the scrap and then it looked like somebody from the Bulldog return team came in and ripped somebody off the pile. And that is also an automatic fifteen yard penalty. So the original two offset and then the third man in. Yeah, the third man in penalty will stand, so they'll move this ball up. Close to the 32. So now the ball will go to the 32-yard line, and that's where the Gladiators will start another drive. They went four and out last time. Let's see what their offense can do. There's a snap blitz coming. It's actually picked up nicely. It's a throw over the middle. It's going to be caught by Franklin. He's going to break two tackles, and now the ball's out. It's on the carpet. Who's got it? And it's the Bulldogs who have it. It's going to be returned down the sideline. One cutback and into the end zone for the touchdown. The big man returns it to the end zone for the touchdown. It's Erza Funa. Fumble recovery touchdown down at the 38-yard line, and he picked it up and took it to the house. So Funa with the monster play. The Gladiators with another turnover, and San Mateo picks up another touchdown. They've got a touchdown in all three phases. So they have a special teams touchdown. Three offensive touchdowns, and now a defensive touchdown. Snap, hold, kick, up, and good. 42 to nothing. The Bulldogs lead here in the first half.
Bulldogs ready to kick things off after they added another touchdown. This one was on the defensive variety as it was defensive lineman Funa who picked up that ball from 38 yards away, ran down the sideline with a scamper and a cut back, and the big man had a touchdown of his own. So it's now going to be returned by the Gladiators. There's going to be a cut up the field and bouncing to the outside. It's a good return. So Higgins was back there to return it. As the Gladiators just mixing up their return game pretty much all game long. They've had trouble with it. As Furia trying to just get anything going offensively. So the return got the ball out to the 32-yard line. That's where their last drive started. And it was a one play and then a touchdown recovery. Or a fumble recovery for a touchdown. For you the snap. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle. And a great run by Cote. That should be enough for the first down. And it is. It's a gain of 10. So Josiah Cote still running hard as it just opened right up. The big hole on the offensive line. Right through that A gap. Bulldogs showing blitz again. So Furry at the line of scrimmage looking. Sends a man in motion. Stewart, seven to go on the play clock. Sets now with three. Furry. Gets the snap with one. He drops back. He looks. Pressure comes. He's going to throw. Stewart's got it, and he's going to stumble forward. He almost broke a tackle, and that may have gone to the house with the zero blitz. As it was full-on man-to-man -man coverage around the board there, and it was one broken tackle away from a big play. So Kerr Stewart having a good game so far, using that yak to his advantage. Furia, 10 seconds to go on the play clock. Furia lifts that right leg. He's going to look. It's going to be a swing out to Cote. Cote's got it. He's swarmed by three white jerseys, but he does pick up the first down. So a gain of four, maybe three, but either way, it's a first down. So back-to-back -back first downs. It was a bobble there. Poof. So under three to go. Stewart in motion again. Now sets. Furia. It's a low snap, and he's going to recover it in the backfield. And he dove just gets... Gets on top of the ball. Don't want to make a bad day worse for him. Trying to pick that up and try and run with it or do anything with that. So it's a loss of seven. That'll go down as a rush. A rushing play. So a second and long. Furia gets a snap. He's going to look. Pressure comes right up the middle. They ran a stunt, and down he goes again. So he's hit and dropped in the backfield again. It's the third sack of the ball game. As pressure came just right up the A-gap. It'll be third and 26. As it, it looks like the Gladiators are going to take this all the way down to zeros on the play clock and then try and call a timeout, which they don't do, and this is a delay of game penalty. So it'll back them up even further.
So after the delay of game penalty, 54.7 to go. Third and way long. There's a snap. It's a give up the middle, and it is blown up in the backfield. The give up was to Way, and he was hammered in the backfield. Just following the pulling guard. What a tackle that was there by Durham. So a loss of one on the play. They're going to have to punt this ball away. It's been dangerous all day. It's Hot Cheddar back to punt. Lovell is back to receive the kick. He wants to return it. He's going to pick it up. He's going to have a chance. He's going to try to change fields. He's going to come all the way across, break one, break another. No time left on the game clock. So he's trying to break free, which he does. He needs one block on Hot Cheddar. He cuts back, and he's going to be pulled down at the 28-yard line, and that will end the half. So almost late fireworks by a dominated half by the College of San Mateo. There's no flags on the field, so that will be the official end of the half. So after 30 minutes of play, it's just been a domination clinic by the number five team in the state. It's 42 to nothing, the Bulldogs lead, and we will have the second half coming up right here on NorCal Sports TV. Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for fourth through twelfth grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand.
Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for fourth through twelfth grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for fourth through twelfth grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand.
Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five-day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for 4th through 12th grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for fourth through twelfth grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand.
Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS-TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp, five-day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for 4th through 12th grade boys and girls. Go to norcalsportstv.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS-TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five-day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for 4th through 12th grade boys and girls. Go to norcalsportstv.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Chabot College, and thank you for joining us here on NorCal Sports TV. I'm Dominic Ariel here on the call, and after that absolute clinic of a first half on how to win football games, it is the College of San Mateo up 42 to nothing, and we'll have some first-half stats for you 
after the Gladiators kick this thing off. As this is going to be returned by Patterson, he's going to let it bounce all the way into the end zone for a touchback. So when you hear these stats, you'll maybe think that the rules were reversed here as first downs were 11 to 7 in favor of the Bulldogs. Total plays, the Bulldogs had 27 on offense and Chabot had 35, but the yardage, 245 for this offense. And the Gladiators on 35 plays only had 66 yards. So tough. Tough moving the football for the Gladiators as it looked like there was a penalty for offsides against the Gladiators here. So they got to stay behind the line. So they'll re-kick it. And, of course, the Bulldogs want them to re-kick it because they'll get this thing into the hands of their great playmakers as their star wide receivers are back to receive the kick again. It's Patterson and Lové. As Anthony Grigsby, we talked about him in our open, how good he's been all season long. 10 of 12 for 177 and two touchdowns. So this kick, this one seems to be legal. There's the kick, and here is Patterson. Patterson takes one cut. Now up the field he goes. He's going to break a tackle and stumble down to the 50. So he's pulled down at the 50-yard line, and that is why they chose to have the Gladiators re-kick. So we'll see this offense again. And as... We suspected Anthony Grisby's day is done, the starting quarterback for the Bulldogs. As now in is Alex Grotto, the sophomore quarterback at Los Gatos High School. He's going to get the snap. It's going to be a little pop pass on a little swing motion and beginning pulled down. And it's a great tackle there from Bechora. So a good tackle there as it was Boone Nelson was the one who got the catch as it is a pop pass. There is holding on the Bulldogs. And so that will back them up 10 yards. So now the ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. So after the hold, first and 20. There's the snap. It's just a straight give handoff over the right tackle. Busting forward. A flag is flying in. Two flags are down. One from the back judge. What a throw that was. That was like a 30-yard flag throw. This is in the area of holding again. In the area of holding. Didn't see it on that replay. And it's face mask. It's a face mask against the Gladiators. And so they'll pick up that yardage right back and pick up an automatic first down. So they'll just tack on the 15 yards to the end of the play. So now the ball will be at the 37-yard line. Grotto gets a snap, and he's going to hand it off right up the middle. Tackle, and it's a gain of five. Looks like it's white in the backfield. Bulldogs really slowing this thing down. 
they were always huddling the whole game but weren't slowing down up to this point. Or this slow. They're running the play clock all the way down now down to one. Grotto's going to make his first pass. He's going to throw it to the outside a little bit behind the receiver. But it is bobbled and caught out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. The pass was intended for Savage, the receiver. And so the pass was incomplete. As Alex Grotto, not a ton of experience so far on the season. On the season total, he's he's played in six games, 12 of 20 for 209. He's got three touchdowns and just one pick. There's the snap. Grotto's going to look again. Pressure comes right in his face, and he's going to be hit and throws as he's getting pulled down to the ground and picks up a first down. What a play by Alex Grotto. Right there, he's wrapped up and delivers a perfect ball. This Bulldogs offense hasn't missed a beat yet. Look like somebody may have gotten a head start as flags come flying in. So after the gain of six, another flag. And it's holding on the offense again. It's Tenji who got the carry. So the Bulldogs really digging deep into their depth in this game. That's their second hold penalty on this drive. Started on the 50. Chewing up quite a bit of clock here as well. Pistol formation. Man in motion. Grotto gets the snap. He's going to look. Pressure comes. It's a screen play the whole way. Tenji gets the catch. He's going to follow his blockers up the middle, trying to fight for extra yards, and is thrown down. It's a gain of 11. So got back the penalty yardage. Tackle was made on the play by Brooks. Second and nine. Can the Gladiators get a stop, maybe even a turnover, and see what kind of adjustments their offense made at the half? Man in motion. Looks like it's man-to-man -man coverage across the board. And there's going to be a run. Tangy trying to bounce it to the outside. He's hitting the backfield, but then stumbles forward for a gain of two, and it'll be third and long. So good effort from the Gladiator defense there. They really look like they sold out for the run. Which they did get a little bit of a stop. Now it is third and seven from the 20-yard line. Of course, they're well within the range of Ojeda. Six and nine on the season, along a 47 Grotto gets the snap, fake the pop pass. He's going to roll out. He's got a tight end, but he's going to take a shot to the end zone, and it's overthrown and incomplete. He had the dump off to the tight end, but he didn't want it. He wanted to take the shot. It was intended for Caruso, but it was incomplete, and out comes the field goal unit for the Bulldogs. So Jetta will get his first opportunity. That's not an extra point. It's a 37-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. Right down the middle, Ojeda stays hot. The 37-yard field goal is good. 9.54 to go in the third quarter. The Bulldogs out of their lead, 45 to nothing. We'll be right back. 
Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for fourth through twelfth grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Football. Ojeda's field goal was good from 37 yards away. So they had three points on their opening drive of the second half. Make it 45 to nothing. Gladiators trying to get their offense going. That's nine offensive drives for them in the game, and they've got nothing to show for it. Haven't gotten into the red zone yet. They have given up a defensive touchdown on the scoop and score and a punt block recovery for a touchdown. So this is kicked towards Shackleford. He's going to have to run up and grab it. He does. Here comes Shackleford, and he's just swarmed by white jerseys at the 20-yard line. Well, see, he's got, he thought that hop was going to take a bounce right to him, but it just goes straight in the air. Really good kick. Gladiators getting no help with any bounces either. They've got two turnover on downs. And one straight turnover on the fumble. And then that was recovered in return for a scoop and score. Furia gets a snap. He's going to look. It's just going to be a quick pass. It's going to be caught by Matthews. Matthews trying to break tackles. He's going to be swarmed and then pushed forward by the offensive line. So that'll be a gain of eight on first down. That was a good clean pocket. Malachi Matthews from East Lansing, Michigan. Went to East Lansing High School. Four down linemen. It looks like the Bulldogs are just going to be content sending four. But here comes a fifth from the slot. There's a snap. It's going to be picked up. It's a late blitz. It's going to be thrown. Matthews is tugged from the back of the jersey. And there's the late flag. So it was a, a throw to Matthews. Is it going to be a hold or a pass interference? There was definitely a hold of the jersey. Couldn't quite pick it up on that replay, but it is going to be pass interference, so it's a 15-yard penalty. Full grab of Matthews. I'm not sure if he would have gotten there anyway, but they will take it. As it is an automatic first down. Bulldogs only showing four again. Let's see if they come with some late pressure. Matthews in motion. Fourier gets the snap. He looked at him. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to look to th throw. He does, and it's incomplete. And Matthews almost tipped that right to the defensive back, and that would have gone the other way. So it looked like he was there for the security valve. And right there you could see the linebacker there, that was Finn Williams, who was kind of the spy on the play in the middle of the field. And right when you saw Furia exit the pocket, just come flying up from that linebacker spot. So second and ten. Furia gets a snap. He looks. First read not there. Now he's going to roll out right. He's going to look downfield. There's nothing there. Now he's just going to throw it away and out of bounds. And it will be third and ten now for the Gladiators. As yes. 
You would wonder to think if this is four down territory, you just try and get five yards here. Cote on the ground has been good on third down, too. He's got a little bit of burst in this game. Let's see if maybe they try and draw up a draw with the Bulldogs showing pressure. There's the snap, and he is hit in the backfield. Nobody picked up the late blitzer. Just nobody picks up the blitzer. It looked like he was lined up right over the center. Aron Atawau. He's the one who caught a touchdown. You'll see right there, just nobody picked him up. So the fourth sack of the day. And that definitely takes them out of four down territory. After the loss of eight. Hot Cheddar will punt this thing away. It's been a journey so far. They call off the blitz as this is very much returnable. And this is going to be bounced to the outside. There's a late flag coming in, so this will come back for a block in the back. Down the sideline, breaking one, breaking another. A really good return, but this should be coming back. So it was Caruso on the return. But flags in the same spot. It looked like either a hold or a block in the back on the initial block. As you can see, the Bulldog offense, they're making their way backwards. So are the chains. So we're just awaiting the official call on the field. As you'll see it there in the top right of your screen, it is a hold on the return team. So this will back them up to probably about the 30-yard line. And it is. The Bulldogs will start this drive on their own 30. Their worst field position of the day has been their own 28-yard line. And there's a snap and hit in the backfield, and down he goes. Ventura does a great job in the backfield right here, cleaning up the garbage as it was nice done by Tovar to set the edge. Loss of five. So Grotto still in at quarterback. He had a couple of good throws on that last drive. Couldn't punch it into the end zone, though as he did try and take a shot. There's a snap. He's going to throw. He's going to look. It's going to be caught and tackled immediately there and thrown down. So he gets about seven yards, maybe six. It was Boone Nelson making the catch. Right there, forward progress gives him seven. So that will bring up a... Third and eight, maybe a long, maybe a, a long eight, short nine. We'll call it third and nine. So, Grotto in the pistol. There's a snap. He's going to look. Pressure comes on the outside. He's going to roll out right. He's going to look down the field. He's going to throw. Oh, it's undercut and almost intercepted. Ventura almost undercuts that pass and picks it off, but it'll fall to the turf and be incomplete, and the Bulldogs go three and out. So um, Malay is back to return for the Gladiators. First punt of the game. There's a snap, and it is a good one. Good end over end kick. And Malay's got it. He's going to try and roll out, and he is hit hard. To the 25 yard line. So a good punt. Their first of the day. 
or second of the day, excuse me. It was after the first drive. They get a punt on drive one, and then this one. So the Gladiators looking to move the football. As they'll start at their own 25-yard line again. Best field position for the Gladiators has been the plus side 46, and the worst has been their own one on that total kickoff blunder. Furia gets a snap. He's going to look. It's going to be a screen, and it's going to be caught by Cote. He gets one block, now trying to bounce it to the inside. He does. He gains about 14 or 13 yards. Let's give him in a first down. So Cote has played well in this game. Tough to find a good positive light for the Gladiators in this one so far. As Furrias drops back and he's going to be hit and dropped again in the backfield. It's another sack. This one's going to be Kalen Woods. For correction, that'll be Lati Safi, number 44, coming off the edge. So after the first down, immediately go backwards on the sack. Fifth sack of the day for this Bulldogs defense. Here comes a blitz off the edge. Furry has to get rid of it. He does, and it's low for Cote and incomplete. Coming off the edge was Hargraves. And, man, he had the quarterback in his sight. You'll see him right here at the bottom of the screen. Times the snap perfectly. And Furia was lucky just to get that ball away. Third and 14. Furia changing play at the line. Five seconds to go on the play clock. Lifts the leg. Gets the snap. He's going to look to try and dump it off. It's a wide receiver. Tunnel screen. And it's caught. And breaking tackles and going up the field. And is tripped down as Higgins. And there's a flag on the play. This could be a tripping penalty. Because Higgins looked to be gone. Broke the initial tackle on the tunnel screen right there. Boom, right there. There's the trip. So a good gain, really good play call as for sure a first down. We can try and see it again here. You'll see a, he's gone right there if it wasn't for that left leg out trip for sure. So this should be a personal foul, and that's what it is. The officials make the call. It's a personal foul for tripping. Fifteen yards or two minutes in the box, however you want to put it. So one of the deepest parts on the Bulldog side of the 50 the Gladiators are right now. One of their better drives. Furia getting the snap. It's going to be a run right up the middle, and Cote has nowhere to go. He's going to be hit for a gain of one yard on the play. Right there, Cote, and there's just too many unblocked guys on these rushing attacks. If you're trying to try and pull guards, and they're outnumbering you on the line of scrimmage with no fullback or no tight end help, there's going to be nothing doing. There's a snap. Blitz comes again. Furia trying to get out, and he's pulled down by the face mask. So it's a definite face mask. The foul will be on Nate Carr. Just comes right off the edge. He's unblocked, and he's pulled down by the face mask. So wipe the sack off the board and add 15 yards to the play. And with a little bit of penalty help, 
the Gladiators are going to have their first trip into the red zone. It'll be first and ten from the 20. First and ten from the 20. First trip to the red zone. Furia gets a snap. Cote. Cote breaking one tackle. Trying to get through the line of scrimmage. There was a hole there. Just couldn't break that last tackle. It's a gain of five. Good gain on first down. You'll see there the, the tackle pull into the inside. Furia gets a snap. He's going to throw. It was late. It's going to be caught. Down to the five and short of the goal line. Down to about the three. Hotchetter got the catch. And hurrying up to the line of scrimmage now. First and goal from the five. There's a timeout on the field, and it'll be College of San Mateo calling their first of the half. So 2.58 to go. It's first and goal for the Gladiators when we come back on NorCal Sports TV. After the timeout from the Bulldogs, it's first and ten from the five for the Gladiators trying to punch one in and get on the board. Snap, Furia going to look, and he's going to be hit in the backfield, but breaks a tackle, but then goes down. So he's hit, dropped, and sacked for just a loss of two. It looked like he was going to get away. We'll see who they credit the sack to. But no matter what, it is definitely a sack and a loss of four yards. Tackle coming off the field a little bit hobbled. Maybe the Gladiators may need to call a timeout here. They don't with none left on the play clock. Furry is going to look. He's going to throw to the back of the end zone, and it's almost brought in with the one hand, but incomplete. Pass was intended for Kerr Stewart, and they had him just on that corner route. He had his man beat just a little out in front of him. Couldn't bring it in with that big right paw. So now it's third and goal. Definitely has to be four down territory here for the Gladiators. Snap, blitz coming. It's a zero blitz. He's going to throw to the corner of the end zone. It's knocked away and incomplete. Nicely done by the defensive back there, Kalen Woods. The pass was intended for Higgins in the back of the end zone. And very surprising, the field goal unit will come on. And so coming in to kick is Lee John Mahuris, sophomore. He's one of two on the season. His one was from 27 yards. This kick is up. It's low trajectory, but it is good. So he bangs it through from 25 yards away, and the Gladiators are on the board 
in this ball game. 45 to three, the Bulldogs lead. You're watching Chabot Athletics right here on NorCal Sports TV. The Gladiators put up three points on that drive with the 25-yard field goal. Surprising, though, they didn't try and get six there. You know, I know there's no moral victories, but maybe run a play that you have and try and lessen this blow, but... Points on the board, 45-3, to three. Bulldogs back to return it. And here they come. Here's Carr. Carr again trying to break through tackles, and he may go. He needs one block across the 40, and there he's gone. Carr to the house. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Nate Carr goes to the house. So there's, I think, late flags, but I think it's celebratory on the sideline. They're talking down here to head coach Fanene. So the touchdown is good. And it's a sideline warning. That's what we thought. Nothing too serious. As out comes the extra point unit. So no real penalty. So the special teams unit. Here's the touchdown on the kickoff return. The special team unit has two touchdowns on the day. The defense has one. And that alone would have the lead for the Bulldogs. So we'll stay right here. As the extra point was up and good, it is a 52 to three lead. San Mateo just in all facets of this football game, have taken control really from the jump. Their first drive was a three and out, and since then they've gone a touchdown rush, a touchdown rush, a touchdown catch. A f they fumbled on one play, then touchdown catch. And we can't forget about the blocked punt for a touchdown and then field goal. And then they had the punt, and now the kickoff return for a touchdown. That's back-to-back -back weeks with a kickoff return for a touchdown. Just last week's was on the opening kick. So back is Franklin. And Higgins, another different combination that we've seen back to return kickoffs. Seems almost every kick the Gladiators are switching up. you got to let this go out of bounds, and they do. So good heads-up play there by Franklin.
So this ball will be brought all the way out to the 40-yard line after the kick out of bounds. Good starting field position. For the Gladiators, a good drive last time helped with a lot of Bulldog penalties. But a good drive nonetheless, got into the red zone for the first time, but couldn't capitalize, and they settled for three. Furia looking for the screen, nothing is there. It's absolutely blown up. And that pass is incomplete. Furia. Oh, Furia is now out of the game. That throw is through the hands and incomplete. The attended receiver was Higgins, but now in to quarterback for the Gladiators is freshman from Irvington High School, Herrick Nakwaresh. So Nakwaresh is in the game. Don't see as... Looking on the sideline, trying to see what's going on with Furia. It looks like it looks like he may have been bleeding, so they had to stitch that thing up or just put a bandage over it. Can't have an active wound. Heck, West, he's going to look. He's going to throw, and he is hit. So the pass was caught, but right at the line of scrimmage, it was blown up. Was Hot Cheddar. So now that'll bring up fourth and ten. And the Gladiators will punt. It's been a little bit of a struggle punting the football. Nico Caruso is back to return. Hot Cheddar's going to get the kick off. Caruso going to call for the fair catch. It's caught at the 25-yard line, and that's where the next Bulldog drive will start. They'll bring out that offense. Offense has been rather quiet in this half, but they've got a touchdown already from the kickoff return team. They've also got a field goal as well, but that drive started at the 50-yard line. There's a snap. It's another new quarterback into the game. As Tenji will get the snap, and that will roll this clock all the way down to the end of the third quarter so the Bulldogs keep this train moving as they score more points and put up 10 more it is 52 to 3 at the end of three quarters of play we'll have the final 15 minutes coming up as you're watching gladiator athletics right here on NorCal Sports TV Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five-day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for 4th through 12th grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Football on NorCal Sports.
Here we go, fourth quarter, about to be underway. Taking the snap is Raymond Price, the freshman, out of East Palo Alto, and he fumbles the shotgun snap. It's on the ground. It's still loose. It looks like Price jumped on top of the football, which he did. It was a good snap. It was right there. Just took his eye off it. Absolutely just took his eye right off the football. So now it'll be third and 12. Third and 12, Price in at quarterback. This is just his third game. He's going to throw a deep ball, and it's incomplete. Just overthrew his intended receiver. It's just his third game that he's playing. He's 9 of 10 before that pass for 93 yards. He's got two touchdowns and an interception, but the defense holds and force a punt. Good snap, and the kick is away. It is a good one. It's going to take a hop, and just surprising. You're going to let this roll all the way down. It's going to keep going to the 20-yard line. So Malay just lets that thing bounce and then roll. It got a really good bulldog roll and rolled another 15 yards. And it was a first down. So we'll check the out-of-town scoreboard here. Just at the start of the fourth quarter, San Francisco leads Diablo Valley 43 to nothing. As Fresno City leads Contra Costa 28 to 7. Modesto leads Reedley 42 to 7. As still in the game at quarterback here is Nakawesh. As it looks like Faria's day has come to an end. It was just a give. Another unblocked man just tackle in the backfield. Cote really has not had a ton of lanes to choose from in this game. But the ones that he's had, he's exploded through. So just a gain of one. Nakowicz gets the snap. He's going to look. The lefty is going to sling it, and it's going to be short and incomplete for the intended receiver, Matthews. San Mateo will keep on pace with San Francisco in conference play as they both are on their way to wins to improve to 3-0 on the season in conference. Nakoeshi is going to look. He's going to throw. It's behind the receiver. Tipped up and incomplete. Hot cheddar. Had a bounce off that shoulder pad and incomplete. And out comes the punt unit. San Mateo will improve to 7-1 and one on the season. Their only loss coming at Butte, which is a tough place to play. It's a long trip. Butte, also a good football team. It's Hotchetter back to kick. He's going to get the snap, and that one was almost blocked. Called for a fair catch immediately and caught at the 43-yard line. Caruso again back there. So the ball will be at the 43-yard line. That offense and another new quarterback in there.
can't catch the number. We'll get it for you. There's the snap. It's a run up the middle. The running back, looking closely, the running back's got a club on that left hand. So Grotto back in at quarterback after Price got one series. We'll see if maybe they just alternate the rest of this fourth quarter. As it was Lolo Matalele on the rush, he's back there again. He's going to get it again, and he's going to put his head down and fight for a couple more yards. And there is a gladiator down on the field. As that is number 90, Jordan Graham. Slow to get up. So we'll take a break, 12-12 to go, fourth quarter. San Mateo with a commanding lead, and we will have third and six when we come back. Football on NorCal Sports TV is brought to you by Chabot College Athletics. Chabot College Football. Learn more about our program at athletics.chabotcollege.edu. American Asphalt, taking care of business in Northern California for over 35 years. The NCS TV Summer Sleepaway Basketball Camp. Five day overnight basketball camp in the Sierra Foothills for fourth through twelfth grade boys and girls. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com forward slash camp to learn more and to register. And meeting rooms on demand. Football on NorCal Sports TV is The injured player on the field was Jordan Graham. He's getting helped off the field from coaches and players. Good to see him up walking. Looks like can't put a lot of weight on that one side. Sophomore nose tackle out of James Logan High School. Third and seven. As they run the clock, there's the snap. Grotto's going to look. He's going to throw to the outside. It's going to be caught and breaking a tackle and picking up the first down and more. Great catch there and good yards after the catch from Savage. That's just a great play to make. The man missed Bochara, and he's been all over the field. But can't bring down Savage. He picks up the first down, and the drive will continue. Man in motion. There's the snap. There's the give. It's right up the middle, but finding a lane and putting his shoulder down, fighting forward. It's going to be a gain of five. Matalele. As he'll come out. San Mateo trying to keep this clock moving at all costs. Tico Asuva will get the carry. He's going to roll out. And it'll be a gain of three, so it'll bring up about third and two, maybe three. It'll be third and three, officially. Grotto getting in the huddle. They're going to break it at about seven seconds here. So they're going to have to get this snap off with two now with one. 
and they will not get it off, and the Bulldogs will call a timeout. So they'll call a timeout. When we come back, it'll be third and three for San Mateo. Here we go. It'll be third and three. They're going to motion a man. A hand in the dirt. There's a snap. They're going to throw it. They wanted the out route, but they're going to take a shot at the end zone instead. Flags all over the place. And it's incomplete. It looks like it could be a hold on the running back. Tico Suva, it looks like. Well, it's a personal foul penalty, so it'll back them up 15. So they'll accept the penalty. So they'll accept the penalty, and the Gladiators accept the penalty instead of making it. Fourth and three. They'll opt for the third and 18. Spread formation. Pistol look again. Grotto going to put this ball in the air, I would assume. There's that cheap motion. There's the snap. He's going to look. Grotto got plenty of time. He's going to throw over the middle. What a pass and what a catch. And thrown down to the 20-yard line. Very nicely done by Boone Nelson. So a really good throw, and Boone Nelson made the play. First and ten. Snap. They give again. Falling to the outside. Wait. Good job to set the edge. But then thrown forward for a gain of four. So is Matale. Slow to get up. He's got that club on his left hand. Did he fall when he got tackled right on that left hand? No. He was good. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen a running back have that club. Defensive players for sure. Second and seven. Snap. It's going to be a fake. And there's a man wide open in the flat. This could go for six. And he is down at the five. Maybe the seven. So just send the tight end in motion with the play action. It's Tyler Borland's first catch of the day. And he was wide open in the flat, and he tried to find pay dirt for the first time. First and goal from officially the eight.
There's a snap. It's a straight handoff up the middle and dragged down at the five. Tenji on the carry and a touchdown saving tackle there from Elliott. Fifteen to go on the play clock. Plenty of time. Tenji again in the backfield. Let's see if they try to give it to him or will it be a play action pass again. The play action game has been so effective in this one so far. There's a snap. They're just going to give it to Tenji. He's going to fight up the middle, and he is to the goal line waiting for a signal. He is still no signal down at the one. So they'll mark him down at the one-yard line. Let's see. Oh, just short. Yeah, the knee was down just barely short. Good job by the defense to hold them up. As they'll go into that tush-push formation. They've just done a power out of it all day. And they've scored two touchdowns. It's the give to Tenji, and he walks into the end zone for the third touchdown out of that formation untouched. And the Bulldogs... Stretch their lead even more. You'll see they'll just run this little power gain right there. You follow the other two backs in the backfield. They did score a touchdown out of formation on a play action pass that went to the linebacker. But that one they just slam it home. Good snap, good hold. The extra point is up and it is good six minutes to go in the ball game it's all bulldogs 59 to 3 they lead and we'll have more right after this After the touchdown, the Gladiators will return. So we've seen this combination before. It's Franklin and Higgins back there this time. As the kick for the first time is white. And it is a good one, and it's going to be a fair catch by both return men. So I'm surprised there wasn't an attempt at a return there, but they'll just take it out to the 25-yard line. The fifth drive of the second half. And so far they've had three punts and a 25-yard field goal. And on that field goal, that was the only time they've been in the red zone in this ballgame. Gladiators, the offensive woes continue as they just struggle. They cannot run the ball. And when the defense knows that all you can do is throw it, there's not much that you can do offensively, especially from the quarterback position. Echowesh still in. It's a delayed handoff. It's a give, and it's a good run. It's a gain of eight, maybe nine, and they're going to actually give him the first down. It's a gain of ten. So away gets the carry. So away out of Raymond High School, or Franklin High School, excuse me, from Maryland. 
Reistertown, Maryland. That's his first carry of the game. Nakawesh with a couple of incompletions on the last drive. Let's see if they can have him throw it here. It's another delayed handoff, and then this one's just blown up in the backfield. So that'll be a loss of about three. Just right off the edge. Just unblocked on the pool. The pulling side when you have no tight end help. That was Jerry Keote. Just Keote right there just on the left tackle. It was a stretch play, but just untouched. And he gets the TFL. Nekoesh, he's going to hand it off. And he actually kept it, and he was hit and dropped in the backfield. So the read option was just blown up in the backfield again. These are the running woes that continue, and there it was again. It's another good play, TFL. Giote. Third and 16. 12 to go on the play clock. Nekoesh gets the signals in. He's going to get the snap. He's going to look to throw. It's just going to be a quick pass. It's off the hands. And incomplete. It popped right up in the air for a tip drill. But not able to break right on the ball was Walker, so it fell to the turf and falls incomplete. And another three and out, and they'll punt this ball away. So hot cheddar back to punt again. It's another low snap, but he digs it out of the dirt. Another fair catch. It'll be caught. As the Bulldogs will most likely just try and run this clock out. 3.31 to go in the ball game. Another dominating performance by the Bulldogs as this would be this is going to be their third game in a row putting up over 55 points and holding their opponents to seven or below. Just domination from this team. There's a snap. It's just going to be a run. It's bottled up nicely but gaining a couple yards on the play. As we'll see the little cutback design run. It was white on the carry. With the second and third phases touchdowns from the Bulldogs in this game, it's really separated how these teams play. As white has a huge hole, and he busts right through it. And picks up a monster gain of about 15 and another first down. So even just trying to run the clock out, just a huge hole. And got out to the outside. White in the backfield again, man in motion. And I give the snap. It's Price back in at quarterback, but White trying to bust it. He breaks a tackle, and he may go. White to the 20, 15, 10, and he's dragged down, and it was a late hit out of bounds for sure. 
So it'll be half the distance to the goal. They'll probably tack on three or four more yards. But a monster run. As College of San Mateo might be looking to put up 60 or more for the second time this season. So, yeah, definite late hit out of bounds after the gain. So they move the ball up to about the six-yard line. Price in at quarterback. Tenji back there in the backfield. Tenji the snap. It's actually a, rev it's a sweep play. A jet sweep diving to the end zone. And he is in. Touchdown. So Kun gets it. Diving for the end zone, he got in. It was just the jet sweep. Not a great snap, but he got the hold down. The kick is up, and it is good. So we'll stay right here with a buck 46 to go. So 66 to 3, their only other time in the season was at Laney they went they won 66 to 7. So just a mon another monster offensive performance. And last week they put up 56 on Diablo Valley. Really, I'm not sure who's going to be able to stop this team. I guess we'll find out that final week of the season when College of San Mateo will take on City of San Francisco. That's a good kick. That should be into the end zone for a touchback. As it is. So we'll see. We'll see if Chabot just tries to run this thing out or if they'll take a couple of knees and get out of here. Nekowesh in the game still. Way is the back. There's a snap. Way will get the carry. and He's bottled up in the backfield. It's another loss of one. As the struggle to run the football just continues. Second and 11. Snap, there's a run right up the middle. Way, fighting forward. He'll pick up the first down. Or it'll be marked just about short. It'll bring up third and two. And now we're under 60 seconds. As we have an injured gladiator on the field. And it is Way who just had that carry. As we look forward, it'll be College of 
San Mateo. They'll move. They'll move to seven and one, and their remaining games will be San Joaquin Delta next week, and then they'll finish at home against San Francisco. As Chabot will be right back here next week against San Francisco, and then of course. For the Battle of 880, they'll finish up at Laney this season. So good to see you. So they'll wait. Good to see Way get off the field. They injury after a running clock inside of two minutes. It's a 10 second runoff so they reset the clock to 39 seconds. And now they'll run it and the way the play clock is showing right now they do not need to run another play and I don't know if they will. So the gladiator offense looks like they will run one more. As they do not Need to play clock is now off. There's a low snap. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. It's going to be good for a first down. And the officials will just let this thing roll out. As triple zeros hit the scoreboard, we have a final. College of San Mateo, the Bulldogs keep moving as the powerhouse they are in the Bay Six as they win the ball game. 66 to 3 here at Chabot. Have a day. All three quarterbacks played. They had two special teams touchdowns, one defensively and the rest offensively. They just put on an absolute clinic and they are going to be a tough team to beat. They'll stay number five. They may even climb up in the rankings. We'd like to thank everybody for tuning into our broadcast this afternoon. And without you, just know none of this would be possible. Please go ahead and hit the like button on this video and subscribe to NorCal Sports TV on our YouTube page to get all updates and other sporting events around the Bay Area. Tune in to our next exciting broadcast of Chabot Gladiator football. That'll be next week at 1 o'clock. It'll be from right here. They'll take on the number one team in the state, City of San Francisco. And that should be a good one, trying to bounce back from this game. I'd like to thank our cameraman upstairs, Sean and Daniel, my great producer, Joseph. We remind you the final score, 66-3, to Bulldogs win. And thank you for tuning in. I am Dominic Cariel saying so long from Chabot College.